I would like to tell you a story that was told to me. It's a true story about Santa Claus. Santa Claus is, of course, a short way of saying St. Nicholas. And St. Nicholas was not born, as you might think, in a land of snow and igloos. The real St. Nicholas was born long ago in a land of green hills, warm sun, and soft sea breezes. He was born in the ancient village of Myra, on the warm southern shore of Turkey. When Nicholas grew to be a young man, his parents died and left him a great deal of money. Instead of spending his money on himself, Nicholas gave his money away whenever he saw somebody who was poor and in need of help. Young Nicholas would also be very careful that he helped people in secret. That was the right way to do a good deed, he felt. In secret, without expecting credit or thanks. Here is the story of St. Nicholas. Near Nicholas's home in the town of Patara lived a poor nobleman who had three beautiful daughters. The family lived in a very shabby palace and had hardly enough to eat. Even worse, the three daughters wanted to get married, but there was no money with which to give them a wedding. And in those days, it was quite impossible to marry off a daughter unless there was enough money to give her a wedding. Things were going from bad to worse for the three daughters and their father. When things were just about as bad as they could be, young Nicholas heard about the family and decided to help them right away. One night, when it was dark, Nicholas went to the shabby palace of the poor nobleman and threw a bag of gold through the window and ran away before he could be seen. The nobleman and his daughters were very surprised and happy. But the next morning, Nicholas was not happy because he thought he had been stingy with his gift. The poor nobleman had three young daughters ready to be married. Yet he, Nicholas, had only given them enough money to pay for the wedding of one of the three. Sure enough, on another dark night soon after, Nicholas threw another bag of gold into the nobleman's room and again ran away without being seen. But still, Nicholas was not happy with himself. He thought that he still had not given away as much gold as he should. So he went back on a third dark night. But he could not throw the gold through the palace window this time because all the windows were now repaired. Then Nicholas had the idea of climbing up on the castle roof and throwing the bag of gold down the chimney. Earlier that night, the three daughters had washed their stockings and hung them up to dry near their fireplace. And when Nicholas tossed the bag down the chimney, the gold fell into their stockings. With all of this gold, the three daughters were happily married and lived a very good life. And when in later years, Nicholas became a very holy and famous man, people remembered this story and put their empty stockings out at night. And surprisingly enough, found their stockings filled with presents the next morning. Nicholas, of course, did not know that he had begun a custom that would last perhaps forever. He did not even think about his good deed, but just went about his business living his life as best he could. Early one morning, he went into church, as he did every day, and was surprised to see all of the churchmen gathered ahead of him. The men of the church ran up to him and shouted, Hail to our new bishop! Nicholas could hardly believe his ears. The churchmen around him explained, our old bishop died a few days ago. We have been arguing ever since about who should be chosen to take his place, but we couldn't agree. Last night as we prayed, we heard a voice which said, Choose as your new bishop the first man who shall enter this church tomorrow. We have spent all night here, and now our prayers have been answered. You were the first to enter our church. Hail to Nicholas, Bishop of Myra. And so it was done. Nicholas was so well loved that the citizens built a church in his honor. The church of St. Nicholas is still there, but because the church was right near a river, years of flood left layers of sand all around the church. The people of Demra have always kept the doorway to the church cleared, but you must climb down a flight of stairs to get into it. It was many years later when another church was built in Italy in honor of St. Nicholas that stories of his life were told by European parents to their children. On the eve of St. Nicholas Day, children would leave their shoes and stockings out. And because St. Nicholas especially loved children, there would always be presents left in secret for the children to find the next morning. There were celebrations on St. Nicholas Day all over the old world. And when the Dutch came to settle in America, they brought the celebration of St. Nicholas Day to the New World with them. Although St. Nicholas Day is really December 6th, the parties and presents which were part of that day lasted until the Christmas season and soon became a part of the Christmas spirit. The Dutch name for St. Nicholas was slowly changed to Santa Claus because it was easier to say, and that's what children in the United States call him today. 
It's hard for us today to find Santa Claus in any one place because, since there are children everywhere, the spirit of Santa Claus must be everywhere to surprise them with secret gifts. But if you ever visit the village of Myra, you will know that you are visiting the place where St. Nicholas was born. And if you visit this village in Turkey at Christmas time, you will hear the people say, Nesut Bir Noel, get your menizi, temeni, ederim. Which is the Turkish way of saying, have a very Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs>